Here in my hometown, Victoria, or my home state anyway, Australia's largest floating solar plant is about to be deployed. Now, a lot of people ask the question, why put solar panels on water? Well, here's why they do it. Here's why it makes a lot of sense. And here's why I'm pretty stoked to see the biggest floating solar plant go into operation in Warrnambool. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome everyone else here on this channel. I've been saying for a long time now, well, since I started this channel, that the electric revolution would happen very fast. The world's grids would transition to renewable energy by 2030 in the West, which I still believe will happen. People call me crazy, but it will happen in Australia much quicker than people predict. Australia's last coal holdout, we were one of the biggest coal producers in the world one of the biggest coal burners in the world. The last holdout has just announced the closure of all of its coal plants, and it's happening much sooner than anyone thought it would. So renewable energy is being deployed at an insane pace, and it all comes down to economics. So why do the economics of solar panels on water stack up? I mean, it doesn't sound like they actually would. Well, first of all, let's have a look at this plant. Victoria's Labor government says the state will soon be host to Australia's largest floating solar array after unveiling plans to install a 500 kilowatt array on Brearley Basin in Warrnambool. The 1.4 million floating solar plant was announced on Thursday as part of an Andrews government's agreement with the state's water corporations to reach net zero emissions by 2035. The project will install more than 1,200 bifacial solar panels on pontoons floated on Brearley Basin. Minister for Water Harriet Shing says it will cut the costs and emissions it takes to pump water to the Warrnambool treatment plant. Now, every water treatment area is different. Every deployment of solar panels on water is different. There's different reasons for it. But some of the reasons that floating solar makes sense are that when they are used at water storage and treatment facilities, they offer the added benefit of reducing evaporation of that water. They also work well for countries that are short on land suitable for large-scale solar farms. In addition, in some bodies of water where the water can be too warm, it can mean there's less oxygen in the water that can cause damage, that can mean loss of diversity in the water. And what can happen is putting solar panels on the water can actually cool down the water. However, there's some other benefits as well. Projects that use bifacial panels like this one here in Victoria have also been shown to generate significantly higher yields of energy due to the reflection of light from the water's surface. Now, this technology is not new in Australia, but so far it has been stored in relatively small amounts, particularly in comparison to global projects, which are typically being rolled out in the tens of megawatts. Now, one of the key reasons is in Australia, we have a literal boatload of land which we do nothing with. We have a lot of arid land and it makes sense to put solar panels in a lot of those areas where we don't need it. Now, one of the world's largest inland floating solar PV systems, the 60 megawatt array on the Tengi Reservoir in Singapore, makes sense, right? Singapore, very, very small country, was completed in 2021. This looks set to be well and truly trumped by another Singapore project, a 2,200 megawatt floating solar farm for a reservoir on Indonesia's Batam Island. Australian floating solar hasn't been deployed as much because, well, as you know, we're a lot bigger than Singapore. For example, Singapore has more than 5 million people, but it's a tiny dot in size in comparison to the country of Australia, and it doesn't have large amounts of desert land either. Now, Australia's first example of a Large scale solar array is a 157 kilowatt array installed in 2015 in Jamestown, South Australia, where it is supplying power to a wastewater facility owned by Northern Areas Council. In New South Wales, a community funded 100 kilowatt floating solar array has been installed at the East Lismore Sewage Treatment Plant. The Victorian government says it is investing in more floating solar projects across Victoria with a $210,000 investment to install an array on a dam at Lardner Park in Gippsland. So solar arrays on lakes and bodies of water are actually starting to ramp up pretty significantly. As we continue to slash our emissions at the rate of almost double our target, the water sector is leading the way towards a cleaner future. 
said Minister Shing. Renewable energy is key to meeting Victoria's ambitious 2030 target of reducing our emissions by 50%. And it's important essential services like water can harness this reliable and affordable new energy technology, said State Energy Minister Lily D'Ambrosio. Now keep in mind, one of the key things driving down the cost of renewables and making projects like this much more sustainable is the true reality which is not really being acknowledged by most people. The cost of battery packs in particular, massive story projects is absolutely coming down. Remember, the energy efficiency and the energy density of these packs is increasing and the cost isn't going up. Therefore, companies are getting much better value out of these packs. But in addition to that, lithium ion phosphate batteries have around three times as long of a life cycle compared to the lithium ternary batteries which were used at these energy storage projects in the past making those investments a three times greater return on the money that's gone into them. Making those investments have a three times greater ROI. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.